Ciao. Little buddy, you know about Aqua Sleep World's everyday low prices. Uh -huh. If you were a major manufacturer, who would you want selling your beds in Tennessee? I, I, I'm, I'm bothered by the whole, well, yeah, on Spotify, because because here's the thing, Spotify, uh, we're still doing it. Sorry. Brian Chaffin's here, everybody. Brian Chaffin is the editor-in-chief of the Mac Observer. He's also a co-publisher and a co-founder, and I expect he's going to add another title next time, so I have to remember more stuff. Yes. Co-host of the Apple Context Machine, man. What's go, up with you? Go away. <laughs> So it, uh, let's just not let's not keep doing it. Let's not keep doing it because then it's just going to be we're just going to keep doing that. I don't want to do that. Let's talk about something else. You want to talk about something else? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we started the week talking about the passing of Steve Jobs because at the beginning of the week it was nine years ago that Steve Jobs had uh, had gone away. We accidentally started talking about Rob Enderley because uh, <sighs> because Rob Enderley said uh, that night that Apple's mm -hmm. best days were behind it. Uh, nine years later, uh, Apple is a $2 billion company, $2 trillion, excuse me, a $2 trillion company. And that, by the way, is not the measure of whether or not, you know, Apple is a better company or a worse company. Um, uh, certainly, it's yeah, more it valuable. Under Steve Ballmer. Microsoft under Steve Ballmer was bigger than it had ever been. And it was the, and it was a terrible, terrible company that was failing in, in all ways. Okay. But it was doing more business than it had ever done. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to hit today then is, um, well, do you want to talk about Apple since Steve Jobs or do you want to talk about Apple after Tim Cook? Because there were a couple of things um, that I found myself wondering. They're kind of tied. Well, okay. They're kind of tied together. Well, then let's talk about, um, I don't even know where I want to go exactly. I mean, the first of all, I was trying to figure out, are there any rock star CEOs left? And I realized, yes, Elon Musk. Okay, so Elon Musk is a rock star CEO. Who are the other rock star CEOs that are left? Because John Ledger, who was the head of T-Mobile, is no longer the CEO of T-Mobile. It was kind of a drag because he was a lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, the only other one that I could think of is uh, the head of Goldman Sachs, uh, David Solomon. But that's only technically rock star because he is uh, D. Saul. Um, he's a DJ, theoretically, which is how they got the Spotify uh, IPO. Having learned under Liquid Todd, which funny story, uh, Liquid Todd was the um, uh, production director at the radio station where I interned a million years ago. Hmm. Yeah, so there you go. Tim Cook is not the rock star that, that uh, Steve Jobs was. Uh, Tim Cook is arguably as famous as Jobs, but not because he's cool, rather because he's the head of a $2 trillion company. I think, and because he's a nice guy, and because I've got some, I've got some very specific ideas on this. Okay, you go. just dive in. Yeah, go for it. All right. When Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs was a one in a, you know, ten billion person. Yeah. You know, okay. I mean, uh, you know, one, one in a million leader. Uh, uh, you know, once once in a hundred years, he, he's you know the 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 Henry Ford without the racism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's he, he's he's he was the thomas edison without the rude oh no he had the rudeness too yeah uh um it, it, steve jobs was steve jobs mm -hmm. and the last thing that apple needed when steve jobs passed away was another steve jobs even if you could find one right because because apple needed to prove to itself that it could exist without without steve jobs and Tim Cook, I mean, I, I, Tim Cook should be the subject of dissertations and studies and books in the decades to come because he took this company, he allowed it to continue. He allowed it to, to, to both continue its identity, develop an evolved identity. Mm-hmm continue to get, to make products and continue to be an innovative company and 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 also through executing Steve Jobs's vision of Apple University of sort of inculcating that Steve Jobs way of doing things throughout the company without Steve Jobs there to actually do it. Steve Jobs should get massive amounts of credit for for Apple University that and the, the that guy from Yale that that he brought on to to do it. Mhm. Mm and Tim Cook should get just massive credit. Like Tim, Tim Cook has made it so easy to that, that has made it look so easy. I, 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 no one gives him enough credit 
for the transition after Steve Jobs. No one gives him that, uh, anywhere near enough credit for that stuff. For Just for Apple to be what it is today, let alone to have continued without Steve Jobs. And we could not – another Steve Jobs could not have done that. Another Steve Jobs would have come in and changed everything. Mm-hmm. Right? Imagine Steve Jobs taking over from Steve Jobs. Right. He, he, he would like different products. These products have to go. This is like I want to I want, you know, that we're going to this technology is great, but we're going to take it in this direction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It would have been a massive overhaul of what the company does. And that's not what Apple needed when Steve Jobs died. It's not at all. Apple did not need an Elon Musk. Forget the fact that I mean, Elon Musk is, is, is a genius and a visionary, but he's not interested in the things that Apple does. Mm hmm. He's interested in a whole bunch of other different things, and that's fine. We don't need someone like that taking over Apple. On the other hand, when Tim Cook steps down, Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that once Tim Cook stops being CEO, it'll be too because he stepped down and not some other reason. Right. It would probably be a good time to bring in another product person. Not sure I agree. But I think I think part of the problem is we don't know what's guiding Apple right now. And I mean, obviously it's doing well. I, I, I get the idea that what's guiding Apple is this idea of a, um, I think the last time you were on actually was when I used this, a, basically a data soup. I mean, the idea that we're just going to move through our data and that our data is going to be constantly around us. And the machines that Apple makes are going to be executing what we want based on the data that it knows about us. He gets up at this time of day. I'm going to go ahead and start the coffee. Yeah, we, we, we normally we go here. I'm going to tell him the fastest route to get to that place. Usually, this is the time of day where he likes to do this sort of thing. I mean, it's not. It's and, and then you know there are also things like you know the AR and VR glasses, which again is just us walking through our data or moving through our data. What I find myself wondering is. Is Tim Cook's Apple executing Tim Cook's vision, or is Tim Cook's Apple still executing Steve Jobs' vision? Because I don't think we need, at least with the way Apple has gone for the past nine years or so, I don't think we need a new product. I think we need the products that we know are coming. Maybe that's going to be the autonomous car, although I don't think it's going to be individual cars that people are going to be able to buy, but it'll be, you know, the inner workings of a car, maybe. I think the AR VR thing I is. A, I think it'll be an Apple fleet for whatever that's worth, but that's that's a digression. Yeah, you mean like Lyft or Uber, except Apple? Yeah. What, what did Tim Cook say? He said there were three interesting things happening. Okay. There's ride sharing, mm-hmm. electric vehicles, and autonomous vehicles, and being at the intersection of those three things is a very interesting place to be. Yeah. Okay. Right. So sure. Tim said that specifically. Now it's been years since he really talked about that, but we know that Apple's still working on the car stuff. Yeah. All right. And if you look at if you look at the future. The, the the days of people owning cars is nearing an end. Yes. Well, yes and no. I mean, I think the I think the cause of public transportation and ride sharing has probably been set back a good bit by COVID nineteen. I love a train. Yes. I love a subway. Yes. I don't love a bus, yes. but I'll take a bus. Except I'm not getting anywhere near any of those things carpool. anytime soon. Same same thing with carpool. <laughs> Casual carpool. Oh, man. When I lived yeah. in the Bay Area, if you're running late, what you do is just pull up at a corner and let some rando get in your car with you. And then you guys can take the, uh, you guys can take the, uh, the yeah. carpool right. lane. But with, with <laughs> fleets of, with fleets of uh, I, I've long been a, a believer in the vision of, of, uh, okay, and this, this, this is it, it, ah, this is in my novel, okay. That I'm still shopping out to, to agents, and uh, and it was sparked in part by 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 and actually this is not true. This predates Dave saying this, but but Dave Hamilton has talked about the vast amounts of space we 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 dedicate and waste to storing cars that are not being used. Mm-hmm. So street parking, garages, you know, uh, parking garages, uh, the garages in our home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, we 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 dedicate a massive amount of 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 real estate mm-hmm. to storing cars that aren't being used. Right. That needs to stop, and it will stop. And and I think that that stops not through me owning an autonomous vehicle that I let other people uh, get in when I'm not driving it, but right. through companies like Apple or Google or you know. God forbid Uber or Amazon or whomever 
operate fleet so that so that the, everything is being is being you know based on you know, they can maybe use a palantir to do some uh, analytics uh on where a car is going to be needed yeah and just drastically increase the efficiency of of, of car usage keep those car, keep those cars going 24 7 okay here's the thing everything that you're saying there though indicates to me that the last thing apple needs is another product guy They need to go ahead and keep refining. I'm not saying there are no new products in the future, but remember, Apple Watch happened since Steve Jobs, right? Mm -hmm. The the the, it was started, envisioned, created, made right after Steve's passing, right? And and you could argue, people have argued that it is the most intimate piece of Apple technology out there. I know some people feel like it's the iPhone. I feel like those people don't have an Apple Watch yet, and I don't know if they're ever going to or not. Maybe they won't. needs, Needs an iPhone. Huh? No, oh, yeah, well, that's true. Still needs an iPhone. That's true. That's true. Listen, the, I, the iPhone is eventually get cut, cut ahead. D- d- ignore Apple glasses that are that are coming, right? Whatever Apple. How do you calling. ignore Apple glasses? But go ahead. Because I want to look past that. Okay. Well, you, look no, to, you look through them. You see, you look through the, them, and it tells you what you're looking at. Oh, stop! Go it. on. Okay, I you want to past look it to the to the to uh, uh, contact lenses, and then I want to move. Mm. To the day when we have um, an implant in our heads mm. that can directly control our <laughs> ocular uh, circuits. Yeah, I remember you talking about this. Now, yeah, same, same, same stuff. That's 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 the real future. But you still need a computer of some sort to both hold your data and 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 communicate with things like the Apple Watch, things like like your glasses or your contact lenses or your head implant. Right, I still feel like that's though why, I, that's why so Phil Schiller said that the iPhone's going to be around for 50 years. I still feel like though everything that you're talking about is evolution of stuff that we already have. Like when you say that after Steve uh, after Tim Cook, what Apple needs is a product guy. I would argue well, that on, first of all, man. hold on. How what? is the iMac not an evolution of things that already were? That was a product guy that came up with that. It was an evolution of, of PCs. Mm-hmm. The 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 iPod was an evolution of things that other people were doing. Yeah. The tablet uh, operating system that eventually became the iPhone was mm-hmm. was an evolution uh, in and of itself. It's not like Apple invented every single aspect of of what became uh, uh, iOS. Right. Right. It was it was. I mean, Apple. It took a product guy. Steve and Scott Forstel, two mm-hmm. product guys, two product people, mm-hmm. to uh, to to say, hey, wait a minute, we can take this idea in a much different direction. It's still an evolution, but it but it took people, it took product people to come up with that. Yeah. I accept your uh, see, I'm not sure I'm there. I'm not sure I'm there because, well, it would depend on what the next thing is, honestly. I just proved my point. I, How well, could you I, not be there with me? I don't. Well, first of all, you let Johnny Ive out of that whole conversation. And I think he's as an important part of the product guy thing as you're talking about with Forstall and Jobs. I mean, it, it was yeah, des- I, design I, I was a that. large part of that. But here's the thing. I feel like, and maybe I'm being too techtopian about the whole thing, but I feel like we're starting to get past the product idea and realize that the piece of glass that you look through is just the piece of glass that you look through. It's what happens with the data. It's what happens with the services that's really interesting. And so to suddenly make the phone the focus again, like like I think we're finally, finally past the part on iPhone. And there will still be some articles that come out in a couple of weeks when Apple announces iPhone 12 that'll say, "Mm, but it looks like crap. Mostly people don't care. Mostly people, I think, at this point want what the thing is going to do for them. They want the service that's tied through it. They want the functionality. I don't think they care quite as much. I mean, it, it, it would be great if it didn't look like crap. But, I mean, everything that you're talking about is, is, I mean, like turning a computer into a product in a way or turning a tablet into an accessible product with the exception of the glasses. And this is why I say I don't know how you can look past the glasses. That's going to be the next thing that we have to worry about what it looks like. Because if it looks stupid on your face, nobody's going to put it on. If but it looks good on your face, then be past the glasses. Yeah, is that there is there is a home for I, there's a place and uh, there's a space for iPhone mm-hmm. even past this next thing that hasn't even been announced yet. Right. Oh, y- yes, I understand. Okay. Okay. That's you, just, you just wear me down, dude. You just wear me down. By the way, uh, we should mention, because I don't think we did this uh, <laughs> at all in this episode, that Brian Chaffin uh, owns all of Apple Park. 
<laughs> no, okay. I have a very tiny steak in Apple and also right. a very tiny steak in uh, Palantir. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, because you mentioned that too. That's all right. I all did right. mention that, yeah. Yeah. Well-rounded. <laughs>